Hello again, I'm Gary Levinson, the founder of Blade Guitars and Gary E. Levinson Acoustic Guitars. I'd like to welcome you to the next edition of Tech Talk. In this Tech Talk, what we want to talk about is inherent resonant frequencies. And let's make that just a little bit more normal now and we'll just talk about natural frequencies. We've all been sitting around the dinner table and had a toast, for example, where we've clinked the glasses together. These sound pretty dead. There are other glasses, for example, that are maybe a bit more crystal glass that have a much nicer tone. The sound of these glasses is determined by the materials they're made of and the frequencies that those materials vibrate at. Now, I would say that all of us, or at least our kids, have at some time had a xylophone. And on a xylophone, you'll see all of the different notes. They're made of the same material. And the different sizes are what are used to determine, in this case, the different tones. So, I have the same inherent resonant frequency, but a different size. And that way, we can get our scale to be able to play the songs. So there's a lot of aspects that will play a role in how a material responds and what frequencies that it gives. What I'd like to do now is talk about when. We've just seen that the natural frequency or the resonant frequency of a vibrating object is determined by the physical parameters of that object. Guitars are made of different kinds of woods and they sound different, so let's take a look why that might be. What you see here in front of me is a type of wooden xylophone. Each of the blocks is the identical same shape, thickness, size, so that what we saw with our small metallic xylophone where we have one material and we vary the tone by changing the size of the individual uh, pieces. These are all exactly the same so that what we'll be listening to is the difference between the natural sounds, the natural frequencies of the various woods. Now these are not necessarily your most common uh, guitar building woods. This instrument was built by uh, Adrian Steger of the Music Instrument Museum in Wulisau, Switzerland. And I do want to give him my sincere thanks for loaning this to me so that I can show this to you because I certainly think it's a, a great way to understand the tones of different woods. We start here with boxwood, walnut, We've got ebony, plum, and go on through. We've got cedar, and we've got the last one here is, um, is spruce. Now, these are not necessarily cut as guitar woods, but what you will hear is very easy to understand how these individual woods do sound differently. We'll start with the boxwood. Walnut, Ebony, Plum, Yew, Oak, Cedar. This is Arva, often known as Swiss Pine or Stone Pine. Maple and spruce. Let's go through that one more time and you can listen to the different tones.
Now, why is that? What we need to do is take a look at what determines the natural frequencies of these woods. There are three main factors that we need to consider. One is the hardness of the wood. Another is the specific gravity of the wood. Let's just call that density to keep it simple. And another thing is called Young's modulus, which is, for all practical purposes, we'll call it a measurement of the stiffness of the material or the elasticity of the material. If we take a look at this piece of spruce, this is a typical piece of wood that might be used as a guitar top or, uh, in this case, for a, um, a smaller instrument, a mandolin, for example. If I bend, if I put stress on this, I can cause this wood to bend. And the ability for me to be able to bend this is a type of measurement on how flexible or how stiff it is and the ability for it to go back to its original form. So how are these characteristics related to one another? Let's take a look at what are the factors that are going to play into the various sounds that we've heard on the xylophone. If we take a look at an equation that pretty much express, expresses the relationship, we'll see that the frequency, the natural frequency of the wood, is a relationship between the hardness of the wood, the density of the wood, and the stiffness of the wood. This constant, or K here in the beginning, will have to do with sizes, shapes, um, the amount of moisture that might be in the wood. But we're going to concentrate on hardness, density, and stiffness. If we take boxwood, very hard wood, so that would push the frequency up, but it's also very stiff and extremely high density. So by the time I have this high density and stiffness, my tone is a lot lower. If I compare that to spruce, spruce is not anywhere near as hard as the boxwood is, but it's also not as dense. So I've got a lower hardness, which would be against my frequency, but I've also got a much smaller density and I've got more elasticity, which means the negative, if you so will, of stiffness. So, I have the higher tone. Boxwood, spruce. You'll find on a lot of acoustic guitars, particularly in classics, that they will often use cedar for a top, for example, instead of the spruce. Cedar is not as stiff. Uh, it usually uh, will play in a bit quicker than spruce is, but it's also not as stiff, or it's, it's, it's less stiff, more elastic than the spruce. Uh, density is about the same. Well, the result, we, the result of less hard, uh, less stiff, is that I've got a lower tone on cedar than I do with my spruce. If I take something, let's think fingerboards. Ebony, very hard, very stiff and very dense. And if I take that and compare it with the less hard maple, for example, but also a much lower density, then I find myself with a darker sounding ebony against a, a uh, higher sound, a higher frequency for the maple. Well, I hope this has given you some insight in how the factors affect the sounds of wood. And we'll take this information on in an upcoming Tech Talk to show you how it fits in to the guitars you play and how that they sound. Thank you.